There it is. Oh, crap. Welcome to another episode of Bass with Captain Lou. Not bad, right? For a beautiful December morning. I mean, here's what we got so far. We got bluebird skies, winds are coming from the north. Gorgeous, gorgeous weather. But for bass fishing, this, cut, this kind of weather could be pretty tough. So stick around. Let me show you guys some tips and tricks on how to catch fish like this. Hopefully some bigger ones, but let me show you guys how to fish these uh, bluebird skies. Stay tuned. My focus this morning is I'm focusing on multiple types of vegetation so that are converged together. So what do I mean by that? I mean you have reeds in this shot, you got pepper grass in the shot, okay? On some other areas you have arrowheads and stuff like that. So I'm looking for multiple types of vegetation pockets to see if maybe the bass are in there this morning. So stay tuned and let's see if the strategy works. There's a bite. There's a bite. There's a bite. Uh oh. Oh, sorry about that, big guy. Uh, sorry about that. Well, it's a start. So there you go. So what happened was I went into a patch of pepper grass in some open in an open water area, and as soon as it cleared the pepper grass, I saw the wake. I saw the grab. I was patient, felt the weight, set the hook, and there you go. One of the baits that I really enjoy using is the swim bait. I get to cover a lot of area very quickly. And what do I mean by cover for those of you following me for the first time or fish or bass fishing for the first time? What I mean by cover is that I'm, 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 in, I'm in a search mode. So covering, I'm, I'm moving around an area, breaking it down to see where I can find active fish. And like I've mentioned, the swim bait is an awesome bait for that because it gets to, first of all, it's weedless. I mean, if you, once you rig it correctly, it's a, weedless, it's a weedless bait. So as you can see here, there's a lot of vegetation of different types like reeds and sawgrass and all kinds of vegetation. So this lure swims through there nicely. And if there's a bass sitting in any of these little pockets and this swim bait passes through there, there's a good possibility it might come up and get it. So if you're covering water, again, one of the best baits to, to, uh, to consider is the swim bait. Here's a swim bait tip for you guys. Get familiar with the swimming characteristics of your swim bait. What do I mean by that? When you guys throw this thing and you bring it on just below the surface, it has its unique wake characteristic, meaning it's a small wake and you can see it and you can see the lure moving on top of the water. If by any chance those characteristics change, meaning that wake gets bigger for some reason, that means that there's a fish following it or a fish underneath it in the vicinity about to strike, so get ready. There he comes. Got him. There we go. That hit was pretty cool. So what happened is I cast over here by this pepper grass patch. I don't know if you guys can see it in this shot. And I started swimming. I picked up the pace of the swim bait on top of the surface. I just picked it up and I was moving it along with a nice little wake on top. I didn't see it at first, but there was a wake about five yards, seven yards away going in the opposite direction. And then it turned and then it made a straight beeline towards the swim bait. I saw the, I saw the hit. I took my time this time, set, uh, felt the weight, set the hook. Nice one. That was pretty cool. That's cool. That's a family of ospreys flying around. There's one. There's one. On the swim jig. <laughs> On the swim jig. And there's his partner following him. I'll take it. I will take it. So as you can see where I'm fishing right now, the day is gorgeous. I mean, you got bluebird skies with scattered clouds. It doesn't make for good fishing conditions. We've had this, we've had this gorgeous weather now for a couple of weeks. 
but when it comes to fishing, it makes it pretty tough. So there's a various ways you could tackle the situation. You could either fish deep, okay? Or you could go ahead and start focusing your attention around cover that offers some kind of a canopy, similar to summer fishing. But these fish with these type of conditions, they could get a little lethargic because of the, I call it the barometrics. With the barometric pressure, I call it atmospherics. But either way, with this high barometric pressure, it kind of hunkers them down. They don't get, they don't travel much. Um, so you just have to buy your time and 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 do a lot of casting and and when you do get a bite, try to study what it is and how they why they bit the way they bit and and try to duplicate that little that little pattern again so that you develop a bigger pattern and, and hopefully some consistency of bringing fish into the boat. I mean, I'm not going crazy today with the bite. I think I've already boated four. I think nothing big, but it beats the skunk. So stay tuned. Let's see what happens. It's unbelievable how clear this water is. It's unbelievable the role, how important of a role vegetation plays in water. I mean, this water depth right now is anywhere between eight to 10 feet in some sections and in others, this is about maybe six. It is like looking in an aquarium. It's a, that's, how, that's how unbelievably clean it is. Gorgeous. Only sad thing is I don't see any big fish swimming around. Okay, so I switched gears a little bit. I went to a speed worm. And the reason for it is because the fish, at least the ones I'm attracting, are still going for movement, but they're not committing to the swim bait. So I'm gonna give the, I'm gonna present them with a smaller profile and let's see if they'll make more of a commitment to it. So let's see if the, uh, if the adjustment works. There is one. Oh my God, what is that? Oh, nice one. Oh, <laughs> okay, good, decent, decent, decent. Holy smokes. I mean, decent, nice chunk. Wow, okay, that was pretty good. Okay, so that was pretty cool. <sighs> Five cast in with the speed worm. And I was transitioning from a deep hole to a shallow hole. And as soon as it got into the grass, slammed it, it was sitting there the whole time and I didn't even know it. That was pretty cool. There's one. Oh. There's one. I mean, again, not a giant. I know this location is known for giants. I know people have been catching giants lately. Trust me, I'm, it's not. It's not for a lack of trying on my part, but uh, in the meantime, I don't mind catching those. <laughs> so I know fishing in a location like this can be overwhelming for somebody who is first starting off. I mean, because it just, everything just looks fishy, everything. I mean, you got so much different types of vegetation. It's just, it could be a little overwhelming. However, if you just take the time, first take the time to learn the waters that you're fishing. That takes a little bit of time. Be patient, watch videos like these and, and read and, and just take your time and absorb information in regards to fishing new areas. However, covering water was another area that I just talked about. You gotta, you gotta just cover a lot of water just because every area offers different types of cover and, uh, and presents itself a little differently. And it could also be holding some fish because of that different presentation. Uh, when it comes to very bright days like this, I'm not going to go into too much specifics, but here's a very big tip, and I know a lot of guys are going to kill me for this. However, it is shadows. Take advantage of shadows. And that's all I'm going to say about that. There's one. Another little, another little guy but I've already seen about two in the five pound range swimming around. And those are the ones I'm trying to target. And they're uh, hanging out with these little guys. So I just gotta, just gotta fine tune the pattern a little bit more. 
God, look at that one. There's one. That's a nice one. That's a good 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 one. I'll take it. I'll take it. They're getting bigger. If you guys like the content so far, just go ahead and hit that like button. Don't worry, I'll wait. Did you hit it yet? I use is a uh, speed worm. In this case, it happens to be a zoom speed worm. And this covers a lot of water. And the beauty about the speed worm is that it causes a lot of commotion and it gets their attention, but in the event that they're being a little skittish or, or they're, just, they're just not going after the, the active movement of the bait, you could kill it and work it slowly and offer something different. And sometimes they veer off the speed, but when you slow it down and kill it, they turn around and come back and grab it. So again, a great effective bait to, uh, to consider when, uh, when covering a lot of water. There he is. Oh my God. It's a good one. That's 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 a good one. <laughs> I'll take this one. This is a nice one. There it is. Oh, crap. Oh, shit. It's over the barrier. Oh, man. I don't want to break them off. There he is. Oof. <laughs> Caught this guy in some shallow water over a barrier. There he is. There he is. Well, another one. God, oh, come on. Oh. Whew. Another healthy one. Look at that, right, one right after another. This is unconventional what I'm doing right now. I'm, I'm frogging. I just seen a lot of nice big bass swimming around. So I wanna see if this isolated frog will get their attention because it's such a big offering. So again, it's unconventional and this footage may never make it to the video. So let's see what happens. Ho oh. ho. There he is. Oh my God, I can't believe it. <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Look at this, I can't even get the hooks out. <laughs> Look at this beauty. On a big old popping frog. Bluebird skies, go figure. There he is. Oh, <laughs> that's two. 